this, what it was like when you got a book from the library. Did you ever have to do this? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> and then, I just told Miss Martin, I have my first contract when I became a teacher in Mountain Home School. And I didn't know, I had for a couple of different years. Ah, yes. This was my first contract that I signed. And it tells how much I made a year or 10 months. You know, if you're not interested in any of this, tell me because I just brought it along in case you were interested in that. And so whenever you're ready to start, I am ready to start. Hi, I'm Brooke Queen. And I'm Isabel Torres. And we have Ms. Hackler here, and we're going to ask her a few questions about her career and her childhood. First question is, who was your favorite teacher as a child, and what grade was that in? Well, I'm going to have to be very truthful with you. I loved all of my teachers. They were wonderful. So, I can't say that I really had a favorite favorite. Of course, we all have people that are special in our lives, and they were very special to me. So I cannot pick a favorite. <laughs> okay. And as an add-on to that question, what was school like for you as a child? It was wonderful because I loved my teachers and I, I loved them so much and I wanted to learn. So I decided, I guess the very first day of school that I wanted to be a teacher. And when I would go home after school, I would play school. And I made my sister and my brother, who are both younger than I, I would say, well, we're going to play school. And I would sometimes have to cajole. I'd start off with that. And then I would have to bribe. And then sometimes I'd have to be a little more forceful and have them play school. And anybody in the neighborhood who came around, they were going to have to play school. And I want to show you girls, I, whoop, uh oh, I don't have it here. But I brought, we didn't have what we call what you're doing for technology, like this today. And last night when I went to the fifth grade graduation from DARE, oh, I thought the videos and all that were there were wonderful. And I thought of the difference from when I was in school at your age. We didn't have all this technology. We didn't have computers. In fact, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about Mountain Home then. I lived across Lake Norfolk, mm -hmm. and we did not have a school bus to pick us up. In fact, we didn't even have a, we didn't have a school bus, so I just had to get to school however I could. And I was very fortunate because there was there was a real estate man who had to come to work. My daddy left. Most people in Mount Home had one car. And so daddies went to work and they had the car. And when I was in high school, you've gone by the high school parking lot and you see how many cars are there. Well, when I was in high school, there were only three cars that I ever saw in the student parking lot. 
and Mr. Hackler had one of the cars because after school he would run errands for his mother and daddy <laughs> and that's how we had them. In fact, I didn't realize until my 50th graduation from high school, I mean, had our 50th reunion, and one of the girls talked about that she got to school and several other students did on a flatbed truck. You know what that is? It was a big truck, a long truck, and it just had the bed of the truck. Yeah. But it didn't have a lot of tall sides on it. Just the little side, maybe, about like this. And she and some of the other students would hop up there, and that's the way they came to school. And then I was very fortunate because the lady who had been, the, back then we called them private secretaries, but she had been the private secretary, the private assistant to the president of Pepsi-Cola, the boss. And she and her husband moved here, and she would pick me up and take me to school. But in class, oh, I mean, she was all business. And then when she, we'd be going home, she'd have all kinds of jokes she'd be telling me. <laughs> and so it was very different. In fact, I was telling Mrs. Steiner, we were talking a while ago, and I said, we didn't have telephones across the lake. In fact, at first, we didn't even have electricity. And we didn't get telephones there until I was in college. Probably I've been in college about two years. And now, most of you are carrying yes. one of these. <laughs> and so things have really changed. So when Mr. Hackler and I graduated from the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville in June, and then we, I had a graduate assistantship. I was to go, when school started at the university in the fall, I was going to be teaching English to students who didn't do very well on their entrance exam. And Mr. Hackler had a graduate assistantship but in mathematics, but it wasn't until the following year. So I was home that summer thinking, okay, I'm going to be ready and thinking what I was going to do in my class at Fayetteville, the classes that I had to teach. And one day my mother came and she said, Evelyn, the superintendent of schools from Mountain Home is here and he would like to talk with you. Well, I had never met him because it was a different superintendent from when I had been in school. And he, he asked me if I would be willing to teach in Mountain Home. And I said, well, I had a graduate assistantship and I was to go back to Fayetteville to teach and um, he said well he would really like for me to come and that was my first really important job interview in girls everything I did about it he came to the house and he had to wait for the ferry 45 minutes and it was hot oh and I was cleaning and I had my hair up in rollers. I don't, do you know what those yeah, are? Yes. Well, I had my hair up in rollers and I was all dirty because I was hosing down a porch because the road, <coughs> the highway was not paved. And so the dust, all the cars would come along and it would be so dusty and everything. So I was doing that and I said, I can't talk with it. Look how I look. 
because we were always taught that we had to be you know, dressed up when we went for a job interview. And I was barefooted and so anyway, my father said, well, he drove over here, Bill, and he, so you must talk to him. And I did, and I didn't know that his daughter had been, had lived in the same dorm that I lived in. And so anyway, it became that. That year was a very, which happened to be in 1954. I know that's something you probably would be interested in knowing. And I then, so just before school started, I felt really sorry. I thought, well, I have a sister and my brother, and if they have to go to college, they'll be there at the same time. My mother and daddy would have had three of us. And so I thought, okay, I will go back later and do my advanced work. So Mr. Hackler and I, well, I became a Mrs. rather than a Miss. And I got to start my teaching career. And that was, that was so exciting to me. And it was going to be in high school. And I brought with me, I don't know whether you want to, this was my contract. And do you know how much, can you see here how much I earned? $210 a month. <laughs> and that was for 10 months. So that meant we had to save money for the other two months that we didn't get paid. And now, of course, that stretched out. Later on, they changed it so we would get less per month. And so we get a check for 12 months rather than just 10. But now that, we couldn't make that on a month, could we? And. Uh, that was, so that was very, very different. But I thought maybe you might yeah. like to know that. But then I was teaching social studies. I was teaching civics and I had graduated. We graduated from the school Guy Berry, which was at the end of Main Street. Yeah. And we went to school in the afternoon. If you were in, well, if you were in elementary school, in elementary school then, in most schools throughout the United States, was grades one through eight. And all of those students went to school in the morning. Mountain Home had only one school building, and that was the one at the end of Main Street, Guy Berry. So we, and we who went to high school, went in the afternoons. So we got out later than, than what all the school does now, mm -hmm. all the district. And I must tell you this, do you know Mountain Hall now, we have three school districts in Baxter County. Okay, Norfolk, Convert, and Mountain Hall. Back then, there were more than 60 school districts. Can you guess why? Um. Do you remember what I told you about the student parking lot? Oh. The um. most cars that were there were three. Um. Because. Maybe because there was, because they didn't need to have a big parking lot so they could fit more schools? Well, that was because hardly many people didn't have a car. And so boys and girls in no school buses. So boys and girls had to walk to school 
So you had to have a school close enough that you could walk there. <laughs> and so that was how we, and so here were all these school districts and gradually they became part of. When I taught your grade level, you know where Walmart is. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a building, a rock building out in that area. I don't know if you've ever noticed it, but it's now the, called the community center. But that was the school for first grade through sixth grade. And we had two, there were two classrooms. And some, maybe you know, do you know Trey, who's in your fifth grade? Um, yes, yes, yes. Okay, you know Trey. Well, Trey's grandmother, Trey Shashin's grandmother, yeah. was the teacher for first, second, and third grade. And I taught fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. <laughs> and as I told you, we had one teacher taught everything and what I did we didn't have a library as you have this wonderful library here so I would come into town and the county library then and you've both been to our beautiful library here in the hall wonderful. Well, at that time, it was just off the square, and it was above the firehouse. And I would go into town and get books, and then I would take them to the school so my students could have different books at times to read. And my parents built bookshelves for me, because I didn't have, have that either. So, if you would take, so when we had a program at school, I would take the books, or my students would help me, and we would take the books out of the bookcase. And if you'll look at this, your bookcases, these, not the tall ones. But we would take the books out, and then we would turn it over. So the back of the library shelves became our stage. <laughs> and, and we would put that at the front of the room in my classroom because I, I had a piano. We didn't have a music room either. So we had the piano in there and I didn't play very well, but I would play some. And on rainy days, I would play the piano and I'd have my students doing things according to the music that I was playing. And that would be, because I was also the PE teacher. But Mr. Hackler at the time was working with his dad and he wasn't teaching at that time. So he would come to school and play baseball with my boys. And we could sometimes have a little longer lunch time when he did that because at that time we had school buses. And the school bus didn't come to pick us up, our students up, until about four o'clock. So since we had class later, why then maybe if they had a really good game going one, that would be, they would still have as much class time, but they could do that. And the parents loved it so much that that's really how we got the Little League and Pee Wees started in Mountain Hall. Because Mr. Hackler became Little League coach and sometimes Pee Wee coach as well. And another teacher's husband was a member of the Elks. And so they bought equipment for us and so we were called the Oakland Cardinals because everybody liked the St. Louis Cardinals in this area and one of our students one of the first students I had Galen Pitts became a pro 
player. He played for the Cardinals, and then he managed a team for the Cardinals and became a scout for the Cardinals. So um, anyway, I was always, and then later on, when there was an opening in the high school again, because Mr. Heckler and I had moved away after our first year of teaching, we moved down to where we did our first real missile program. And we didn't have a Frau Reed at the time in high school. So Mr. Hackler and I went to church and we went to a service and we couldn't understand a word anybody was saying because the whole service was in German. All the German scientists that our government brought to the United States, like Werner von Braun was one of the head scientists at the time in the missile program. And they were all German, so they all spoke German. So the pastor of the church spoke German to them, and there we were, you know. <laughs> and so when we left that day, he stopped us and he said, you might want to come to the second service. That one's in English. <laughs> and then later on we moved back to Mountain Hall and that's when I was teaching because there was no position in the high school in the old me. And the superintendent, who had been the principal the first year, I thought, said, as soon as there's an opening in the high school, the board and I have agreed that you may have that job, and uh, but I, I loved when I taught for fifth and sixth grade. I always worried since I was teaching three grades at one time, and I was not trained to be an elementary teacher. I really worried that I wanted my students to be sure to have everything they were going to need, and then later on. When I started teaching in high school again, why well, I had some of those same students. In fact, some of them I had for three years because as they moved up, so did I. <laughs> and uh, so that was, to say, it was quite different. And do you know, we, as I told you, I didn't have this wonderful library and everything. The first thing that I got was I had a box of chalk, like the boxes of crayons that you get, the smallest one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had that, two erasers, and a grade book. I didn't even, I didn't have anything of, and my, the book that the students had. <laughs> and that, and everything then had to come from my head, which was why we gave then in high school, a lot of handouts like this. And this was, I say, I heard this morning to see if I could find it. But I, in the process of moving and giving things to an alumni house, where I didn't have some of those things. But you are sitting here, we're sitting here in the library. And this, I borrowed this from Mrs. Steiner. This was a book that she had. And when you checked out a book then, you didn't do it using technology. You had a little card in each book. And you signed out, and the, the teacher would stamp it so that you knew when you had to return this book. Then you had, and at that time, every high school student had books, a book. And one of the things that Mr. Hacker and I did, we sponsored everybody in the high school, I guess, belonged to two different organizations. And one was Future Business Leaders of America. And the other one was future teachers. Now, we knew everybody wasn't going to become a teacher, 
But everybody just joined anyway, and we had some wonderful times. And what they, what we did then, our textbooks that we had, students had to buy them. Now you know, you don't have to buy your computers, do you? No. But they had to buy their textbooks, and so at the end of the year. Why the students and future teachers would help us, and we would buy back students' books, and then in the fall when school started, the students who needed textbooks would come to us, and they would buy the books that the former classes had used, and we would make a profit of ten cents per book. <laughs> and we'd store the books over the summertime and then before school started, why? Then we would open up the uh, room, it was a room right across from the principal's office and we would sell, and the students would help us and we would sell those books. So. All these things are so different from now, as I say, everything practically is technology for you. Yeah. Which I really need to come to your classes and learn to <laughs> use this, because I would not begin to know how to do what you're doing today when you prepare all of this. Now, I need to let you talk a little <laughs> bit here. Okay, Isabel. What was one of your favorite childhood memories? One of my very, well, I love to ride a bike and I love to roller skate. Those were fun. And we had a skating rink here in Mountain Home. So I got to do some of that. But I'd say that very, very favorite was Christmas. All of December. Love Christmas. My mother and my grandmother loved to bake and they loved to invite people come to our house to eat and my they made cookies little cookies like this and they made them in different shapes different colors different tastes different flavors oh I love that because you know back then what I got to do was lick the bowl yeah, I do that. Eat a little dirty. <laughs> and do that. And my mother would make like little wreaths like this. And she'd cut maraschino cherries and make wreaths on the. And little, you've seen, like when you go to the grocery store and you've seen the little. So here I'd have all these little colored sprinkles on it. And she would make little. Uh, Christmas socks and make them different colors mm -hmm. and all. And we had under our Christmas tree, big, very large Christmas tree, we had a village. We had the city houses and we had log cabins and a farm. And I would get to help them. And that, like all around the dollhouses here that Mr. Hamper and I built. Well, like I had that mirror and that bridge. That bridge was one of the bridges that we had under our Christmas tree. And we had a train. A train that had, you know, when you go by and the train's coming along, yes. you must stop yeah. in the highway when those arms come down. But we had that, and we had tunnels, and we had street lights that worked, and oh, it was. Oh, I just loved everything. And those. so when Mr. Hackler and I, later on, we got all the village. Mm -hmm. And I would put that under the tree. So at Christmas time, the teachers that I worked with would have a party. We loved to eat and we loved to get together. So <laughs> we would come to my house because they would bring their children to see that. And so as adults now, I've had some of those that were your age 
come and tell me that that was one of their best childhood memories was getting to see that. So that, that was lots of, oh, and we'd go to church and have special programs there and special programs at school. So I'd say, and something that I loved, my grandmother would take me to, it was one of the largest department stores in the country, one of the very nicest. And for several years, every window, they had a lot of store windows. And the scene from one of my favorite poems, it still is one of my favorites, The Night Before Christmas and All Through the House, and the creature was stirring, laying in the mouse. We all, every window was a different scene from that. And I can't remember whether it was your grade that at Christmas here at Hackler, some of you did the night before Christmas for a program. Oh, I was so excited when you did that. Because that, as I say, was one of brought back lots of wonderful childhood memories for me. And so that was very special. And it was also special because that was the last Christmas present Mr. Hacker gave me was he recorded the night before Christmas. Hallmark had, you know, the the books for yeah. children that somebody can record. And I he asked me what I wanted for Christmas and I said when we walked in there and I saw that book I said record the night before Christmas for me. So your singing the night before Christmas here at school, having that was very special to me. You have another question for me? Yes. Um, what, what, what was your most number of students in one classroom? Oh, wow. <laughs> 54. I had 54 students in one <gasps> class period. That was the largest. And I had to, when I walked down the aisle, it was so crowded. And when I was in school, it was this, it was my chemistry lab when I was a student. And then it became my classroom later that I was teaching in, that I would have to walk sideways <laughs> down, the, down the aisles. <laughs> and I was a teacher who didn't sit at my desk very much. I was up around in the rows. But that year I didn't go down the rows quite so often. <laughs> but then then the next largest class I had that year was about 45. So it was they were full classrooms. Okay. Where did your where did you start your career? And why did you choose literacy? Well, I guess I chose literacy because from the first of school, loving to read, and it just flowed that I was going to read. And so language is, as you know, very important. We just called it as the same English then, and reading. And I started right here in Mountain Home in the same building from which I graduated. Except, when I went to high school at Pinkston, we didn't, we started off, we didn't have a gym. And so our PE classes, which at the very first ninth grade was at Guy Berry, and then, I must tell you this, again, it's so different. They were building the high school at, which is now Pinkston. And sometimes the man who was our principal then would take a few boys and a dump truck and go down <laughs> to the river at Cotter and they would shovel gravel <laughs> in, <laughs> into the dump truck. And, and they would use that in building Pinkston. He said they would stop at a store where the Buford Road is. There was a called Horn Station. 
and he would stop and reward them with buying a bottle of soda or pop, whatever you call it now. Mm -hmm. And that was their treat. But while he was driving back to Mountain Home with the gravel, those little handful of boys then sometimes at the first of school in September when it was warm enough, they would get in the river. <laughs> so, not, I don't think we would be doing that today. <laughs> How did you feel when you knew the school was being named after you? Truthfully, we didn't even know that was going on at the time that they were looking for a name to name the school. Mr. Hackler and I were both having some serious health problems. And the first inkling we had about anything about naming the school was we were sitting in the hospital to check in to the hospital. And one of our former students came by and said, Oh, we want to said we're we're calling, we're writing, we're emailing, and we didn't know what she was talking about. And she said, and we said, ah, what do you mean? And she said, oh, we all want, your former students want the school name for you. And that was the first we knew anything about it. And we didn't hear anything more. We were too busy. Mr. Hackler had a very serious stroke. And he was having to relearn things. For instance, he had to relearn how to add one and one, his multiplication tables. He had taught calculus, and he could do the difficult math, but he couldn't do the elementary math. And he had he had to learn the alphabet all over again. Everything. He, in fact, he had to be learning to walk again. So uh, we were really out of the loop. <laughs> at the time. And so one night the telephone rang and I had laryngitis. I couldn't talk that you could hear me. And he answered the phone and it was Mr. Robert Nelson who was president of the school board and who had been the band director here for years and years. And anyway, he told Mr. Hackler and he said, Oh, I'm gonna put Mrs. Hackler on so you can tell her too. And I could I couldn't talk to him, but he told me. And so but you know what? We we were so humbled by it because we knew there were so many wonderful educators in Mount Home and had been through the years. People who just volunteered to do things. They were not paid for them. Just like your teachers come in the summertime and they're working and they're not paid for that. But they did it because they love students, they love teaching, and we had worked with so many people we knew that were definitely worthy of having the school. But that was a big surprise to us, I will tell you. And we kept thinking, why us? But we know that this is a very special school. We think you all are special, and you have special people who work in this building. Very special people. And you make me happy, happy, happy when I come here. You put a big <laughs> smile on my face. Everybody from the front door, those ladies, well, some of these people have been my students. And then sometimes when I go, you know, I like to go down to the cafeteria and visit with you all down there, all the lunch period. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm looking when grandparents are coming to eat with their grandchildren. They were my former students, the grandparents <laughs> were. So that's special to me. I get to see their grandchildren and them. Mm -hmm. My next question is a little bit about EAST. EAST is about teamwork and working together and finding out, using technology to find out uh, ways to, like, 
help the community. Yeah, help the community basically. So, and we all do, well, projects. Mine and Isabel it, are photography. Um, we both do the cameras and editing and all that. So the question is, if you were in East, what would your project suggestions be? Well, first of all, I want to tell you how very proud I am of what you do in East. Oh my, the other day when I got to see some of the work that you had done, helping parents with things for activities for the summer for you all, that was wonderful. And if I were, one of the things that's going to be happening in Mountain Home is that we will have a new park area. And I was thinking about, I wonder if we couldn't somehow at East help with that. Because that, that property uh, at one time belonged to Mr. Hackler's aunt and uncle. And I, there are wonderful ponds there and everything. And I thought, you know, we're, we're very fortunate in Mountain Home with all the things that we have for a small town. They are very. And, and I thought maybe that you all might become involved with that. Good. Mrs. Hackler, what would you say is your favorite thing about Hackler? The fact that you make me so happy and I'm so proud of what you do at Hackler. And I mean that. I, I think it's a very special place. That's what I tell everybody. And I really mean it. I, what you do are things that we didn't do until maybe we were in high school. <laughs> and so, and it's just, a, you know, when you enjoy doing something, it makes it much easier to do whatever your job is, right? Yeah. And I think this is a happy school. I think students like the school. Yes. And you like your teachers. And the teachers all like this school and they like you. And so when I come here and I get all these hugs and high fives and big smiles, why, oh, you make my day wonderful. And so I'm just so proud of the students here and the teachers, the administration here at Hackwork. Because every, I think just about everybody loves Hackwork. Um, my last question is, how did you feel when the school was completed? Oh, we were so excited when we had the groundbreaking here by Mr. Hacker was having these serious problems. And so we didn't get to really come and walk around much until it was nearing completion. And the job superintendent uh, showed us around and we were the only two adults except the workers in the building. And, oh, we were so excited because I told you the first, the only thing I had when I started teaching, the little chalk box, yeah. mm -hmm. box of chalk, and, uh, and I looked and oh, here I had, you know, all of the things that the teachers had because if we wanted any of these things that you have, why, the only way we had them was if the teacher bought them herself. And so it was just an exciting, exciting time. And I thought, oh, how wonderful. And there was a, one of the teachers had her, her little boy here, and Mr. Hackler was then working <laughs> one day a week, and he, and his dad, he was working with this boy, his daddy. And he said, oh, my son came home and he was so excited. He said, dad, I went to wash my hands and the water just turned on. And the lights just turned on. Happy, what was your favorite subject as a child? Oh, back then we didn't call it literacy. We called it English. <laughs> and that was my favorite. 
always, and I love to read. So it was just natural. And then my daddy was so interested in history that that became one of my other majors when I went to college. And thinking about that, I know I'm jumping around a little bit here for you, but I, when I said I love to read, on Saturdays I would help my grandmother. I would dust and do things like that. So she would give me a dollar, and every Saturday she would take me to buy a book, and I would save part of that dollar, and I had a little salt box. Have you seen the box, yeah. the Morton salt box? Mm -hmm. I would have that, and she kept that in her closet, and I would take part of that money, part of that dollar, and I would put it in the salt box, and then that was the money I was going to buy Christmas presents for my family. So, and I'll have, my mother and daddy believed in early to bed, early to rise, makes men healthy, wealthy, and wise. I don't know if you ever heard that. But there was one of our founders of the United States was a man named Benjamin Franklin. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've heard of him. Yes. Well, that was one of the things that he he later on um, published some uh, like a magazine, and that was one of the the sayings that he had. So we we all three had to go to bed early. Well, my sister and I shared a bedroom, and we had bunk beds. And since I was the older of the two girls, I got the upper bunk. <laughs> and when I would get a book and earlier in the day I would hide that book under my pillow. So when my parents said it's time for bed, I had my book stashed away uh -huh. and the hall light would be on. So I would hold my book out like this to try to read it by the hall line. <laughs> and, uh, so I always loved to read. And my dad had worked for a publishing company when I was a very little girl. And he wanted us always to read things that were educational. So a lot of other boys and girls were getting to read comic books. <laughs> but this girl was reading uh, we had a publication, and it's still in existence, called Children's Activities. They may call it something else now. But anyway, it had educational, but fun things in it. So that's what, what I did. Um, my second question is, what is your favorite book? Oh, when I was a very little girl, my favorite book was Lad, a Dog. I love dogs. I guess because my mom and I was before I ever started school. One of her friends had a dog and he came up and he licked my face and my mother said, oh he's giving you a kiss. Well I thought dogs were wonderful then and <laughs> so that was my favorite book then. And then as an adult I have liked many books, but two of my very favorites, one was, it was called Master Mariner, and it was a history of the British Navy from the Spanish Armada up to about the time of the Civil, our American Civil War. And another book was called Age of the Surgeon. And it was about medicine through the years and how different, differently treatments were and how for a long time doctors didn't realize that they needed to wash their hands between patients. <laughs> And if people, when people were in the hospital, sometimes they became very sick. Because I'll tell you another little secret. 
they might operate on one patient and then they might just take their instruments and wipe them off on their clothes and then go to another patient. Well, you know from school now that's how disease is spread, don't you? <laughs> and so uh, those were, as I say, in the book about the British Navy, that man worked on that book for 18 years. And one of the librarians at the university in Fayetteville told me that if one sentence in a book was not true, that it had to be classified, just one sentence, it had to be classified as fiction. And that is historical fiction, that book. But it was so, and I, the man died before he finished it, but he had his rough notes, so somebody picked that up and completed the book until up to the time of, our, of the American Civil War. And I brought with me also how different school was for me. We didn't have computers. It never heard of a computer. <laughs> and when Mr. Hackler and I were in graduate school, one of the things that he did to help us financially was he was he worked in the counseling department. He was getting his counseling degree. Mm -hmm. And he would test the students coming in, the freshmen. And then he would take all those materials and he would walk to the College of Engineering. And your East classroom there was the size that they needed for a computer. Now look at your, well, I brought my cell phone along, which this could do everything in that computer, which would took up the whole room, can do just a little chip today. So how very different all of this is. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that we did, and I loved school so much, and all my teachers knew that I did. So I would ask them, they, we had what we called handouts. And I just brought, now this is from when I was teaching in high school. And these were some of the handouts I gave my students. And you see this purple? We didn't have copy machines. We had what we called a mimeograph. And it, you put a fluid in this and you would turn this handle and it would produce these. Well, it seemed we teachers usually had some purple on our faces and our hands from these copies. But this is what, for instance, I can remember. And I, we gave so many of our things that we had from when we were in school to the alumni house, which is on the Pinkston campus, which at that time, when I was in high school there, was the home economics building in which you would learn to sew and how to buy properly and all kinds of things. And both, some boys took the class as well. But anyway, we would, what I got when I was in first, second, third grade, they looked more like this because we had workbooks and all that were published. And the teacher would hand these to us and we would have these to work on. But now you're working on the computer instead. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, so they would save theirs for me. So at the end of the school day, I would go to my teacher and I would ask if she had any handouts for me to take home 
because then my sister and my brother, who are both younger than I, then I would be teaching them whatever it was that I had been learning in school then. So, uh, let's say it was very different. And also, I had the same teacher all day long. She taught me science, she taught me my arithmetic, she taught everything. And later on I'll tell you about when I was teaching then, because I taught fourth grade, fifth grade, and sixth grade all together. So if you had been in Mountain Home years ago, long before you were born, why I might have even had you in class but we would have had some of the fourth graders there with us as well and sixth graders mm -hmm.